Okay, today is Wednesday, January 21st, and this is Chris Payton, and I'm here with Polly Ober, and we're checking the tape recorder. Okay, what we're asking people to start with is how they first came to know Johnny Mercer. Right. Uh, this We had the same real estate agent, and who decided to... Uh, he came over and said, Paul, uh, there's an interesting new couple that's um, moved, or is always renting on Lido. Mm -hmm. My husband and I, see, moved on Lido because um, we needed a place to settle. Uh, so we had the kids and he was still based at El Toro. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know, for some reason, he brought Johnny and Ginger over and we just clicked right away. Of course, my husband was a Marine and they liked Marines and they liked the fact that, that, that uh, I had a son, Mike, who was the same age as Jeff, and they needed somebody for Jeff to play with. Mm -hmm. And so these kids, you know, became, uh, I'll never, I wish I could find that. It's uh, from Jeff to Mike, and it says, from, from your blood brother, B-L-U-D. And they, <laughs> they signed it, you know, oh, their thumbs <clears throat> with bloody fingers, and I just got it. Had to laugh. Oh, here's, now here they are at El Toro. Uh, my husband, mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. father, Johnny, Jeff, and Mike. See, those the, the kids became inseparable. Mm -hmm. And sadly, uh, my son died uh, fairly recently, so it's kind of difficult for me to talk about it. But oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so, about when did you meet? This would be in the fifties. This right? would be in the fifties. Uh, okay. Well, this is 55 mm -hmm. when we talked him into doing that program f um, for the hospital. It's a f uh, fundraising. Yeah, it was a fundraising. Thing. And he was very gracious about it. And he, uh, uh, in the meantime, I found. And it was the hospital in Newport Beach? Hogue Hospital, yeah. It's really a famous hospital. See, there he is. With my daughter and and Jeff, my daughter is now forty-seven. <laughs> uh, time flies. So, so we, and your daughter's name was Patsy. Patsy, yeah. So we've been pals for a long time. And then when we uh, were transferred to uh, to uh, Beaufort, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Then we, that's when we came, uh, I had started having fun with them in, around Savannah. Mm -hmm. And I was just noticing this, that they had a coming out party for Mandy. Beautiful, gorgeous party. I heard about that. Yeah. It was can you, what can you tell me about it? Uh, when was it for starters? This is what I wore. Late 50s? Um, dude. See, this is the bad part. Never. Oh, okay. Late fifties, right? Because this picture is says fifty nine Christmas. Okay, it's so maybe fifty eight, fifty nine. Fifty nine. Fifty nine. Yeah, one of those. That couldn't couldn't Mandy remember? I forgot. I didn't know about it at the time that I spoke with her. Oh, okay. Well, now here. What that's is a, this? that's us. That's a brochure that's from you. our first exhibit. We have a new exhibit now. Yeah, I see. Okay. How did I get this? He probably sent it to me. Well, no, he was dead. Ginger oh, this did. Ginger sent this. Yeah. Because there is yeah a trip to Johnny. Now, so he, what kind of things did you do in Savannah? He said that. Well, we we did the party for Mandy, of course, but my husband and and. Um, Gosh, here's here's at Jeff's and my son's graduation from high school. It was Ginger and me. Um, and so, of course, uh, most of our stuff was in Newport Beach, mm -hmm. and not in Savannah. But so, did you come back to Newport Beach later, or yeah. was it? Well, we we always came back, and they rented, and then they finally bought a home. Mm -hmm. And then we start seeing, seeing lots of them, but particularly uh, Mike and Jeff. And they would take 
these kids on skiing trips and everywhere mm -hmm. to keep uh, Jeff busy. <laughs> and Johnny did a marvelous thing that you should have. He wrote a story about Lido Isle on naming all the streets, starting with Via and Thebes. And I kept a copy of that. Where the heck is it? Uh, well, here's the deal thinking me about the house bill. 1954. So the hospital fundraiser was in. Well, this was another fundraiser for the children's home. Mid 50s, yeah. house. So this is one that he did for the children's home out of Auxory. He was so gracious about his time, my God, you know, and, and like I said, his plate was constantly full. I don't know how he ever squeezed it in, but he just couldn't say no. He was the neatest guy about saying, oh, oh okay, I'll do it. But shoot, I've got to find that cleaning because uh, then I had it made, it's hanging up in the Little Wild Clubhouse because I thought it was so terrific and, and everybody else on Little did too and they said my God so we, we had it framed and and uh, it's now hanging in the clubhouse on Little Wild but and I have a thing of all of his Christmas cards but maybe Mandy showed you that those we have some in the archives but we don't have a complete set. I did, and now that's been thinning out too, because uh, if I could have gotten home a hold of Patsy, my daughter, I would have said, hey, Pats, where is all that stuff I loaned you on Johnny? Because I certainly can't find it. Oh, Chris, I'm not doing anything to help you at all. Oh, yes, you are. Um, anyway, so, you know, we, they were appalled when my husband died, and his the whole t town was, because he was so young, he was only, um, whew, six, he died in 65, and he was 48 years old, mm -hmm. and Johnny was just sick about it, because Johnny got a couple of, uh, 502s, and so, which is for drunk driving. Oh. And he, living on Lido, you know, he had to go up to town a, a lot, like three times a week, you know, to this, to the, um, you know, the big recordings to the- Capitol. Ca uh, Capitol Records. And so, yeah, <laughs> and my s husband was on leave or something. I don't know, anyhow. So Matt always drove him. And they became really tight friends that way too. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, Did you all live near each other? Yeah, about you know two, two or three streets apart. On Lido. On Lido. Mm -hmm. The streets are alphabetical, and we were we were on uh, Piazza Lido, which was about three streets from uh, Coron. They, they were on Via Coron, mm -hmm. and they had a nice big house. You know, we didn't because we were you know just poor little old Marines, but they they liked us. But we became wonderful friends, and I was sick about losing Ginger because she and I kept up the friendship, and then, you know, she got very ill mm -hmm. and cranky, and she didn't want to talk about the old days. I'm sure you have this one. That one looks familiar. Yeah. That's after he died, Ginger said that out was where I was. Right. Oh, here's the one on the, on, oh, that Lido. He typed this up for me. Uh, man, I could get the this page too. That, he's telling me about all the streets, streets on Lido. So this is on the wall of the uh, clubhouse. Yeah, yeah, the club. The 
The Mercers have a boat? No, but they were, they, they like boats. Mm -hmm. And they, I don't know why they didn't get one. Well, Johnny wasn't very salty. He liked mm -hmm. being on a boat. Uh, this is kind of interesting. It's when some of the musicians came to town, Johnny talked them into going to the high school to put on this uh, semi-concert or whatever it was. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And there he is. And that's in 1964. Yeah. So they were involved then with um, community affairs. Oh yeah, around Lita. Very very helpful around Newport Beach. Newport Beach. Yeah. Was Mrs. Mercer involved in things? Oh yeah, she was a volunteer at the hospital and. Oh really? Oh yeah, she she was great. What kinds of things did the volunteers do? Well, is it like I think administrative she, or? No. Um, yeah, you know, we manned the gift box, and, and she, uh, I think she rolled bandages. I think she was with that group. Mm -hmm. um, Mandy would know that. I'll have to ask her. I ask her about that. up when she yeah. spoke. Now, you're not, are you involved at all with the Mercer Foundation? I know about them. Um, I'm kind of mad at Margaret Whiting, because I think definitely Mandy should be on that too. Uh, on that board of directors, mm -hmm. and Margaret is not, you know, being very co cooperative about it. I don't know what's what's her problem. See, now, this is terrible, Chris. I'm sorry. I'm so disorganized. It's okay. It will all turn up. Just all that That's stuff. That's Academy Award. Yeah, flipping. I remember that uh, they used to argue. Each year, uh, who's going to uh, hire the limo? Because they all went together, you know. The, for the Academy Awards. For the Academy, the Man Mancini's and, and the Mercer's. Mm -hmm. Now, is this your deal? No, that I think is Savannah. And have the, you talked to them at all? Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. In fact, we've loaned them some things. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, be careful that you, that you can get them back. They're mostly reproductions. Oh, it's I things see. like photographic blow-ups and yeah. things like that. I'm not terribly concerned about it. See, I, thank you, Johnny Mercer. Uh, July 4th, let's see this. Is this the, oh yeah, that's the foundation, isn't it? Oh, that's the Carl Rowan tribute. Oh, okay. And it looks like they sent it out as a Christmas flyer. Johnny was awarded the, um, oh, this is 66. Uh, oh, or, yeah, we knew that something had happened in Orange County, but I didn't know what. Well, this was what happened. Okay, what was it? It was um, the tribute to Johnny. Mm -hmm. And um, by the county, Orange County Press Club. That's it, Orange County Press Club. And so he, good old Ginger, he and Ginger dragged me along to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, see, I've got all these. I'm just to see Mercer on Now, you said that he uh, was kind of like a Pied Piper with children. Oh, absolutely. What kinds of things did they do? Well, they certainly took, they zapped around in that um, uh, golf cart. Mm -hmm. And so they took them for rides? Oh, sure. They would take all the kids for rides. And uh, <laughs> these are so funny, these pictures that he took and sent to me. Uh, and he, uh, he was constantly taking. The boys somewhere. I don't know where they went. To, you know, circuses and movies and and ski. And I know they, they they went up to a lot of ski trips. Remember, Mr. Cash, Zan um, Thompson. Do you know her? 
She's a writer for the Times, or she was. She came down and interviewed me and Mike a couple times. Oh, there's the golf cart. There it is. There it is. And who's piloting it? That's my daughter, Patsy. Oh, it is. So he let him drive it, too. Oh, he was... He... Whose dog is the little... Uh, who's the dog sitting on the seat with her? Little... That's uh, Sam, our dog. And they had dogs... Uh... God, I don't know. What Tippy? Names. Tippy and, Tip and Tyler Two and Tippecanoe. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know about the dogs. Well, we we have some pictures of them. Yeah, it's that all that we know. Well, see, this is just all stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what good archives look like. Just plain old stuff. Another one of these. Mm-hmm. I was trying to find. See, every uh. Johnny did come over, and uh, he and um, Jack um, Marshall, mm -hmm. who they talked into moving down to Lido. Jack was in the music business, an arranger. Mm -hmm. And um, so they became part of our group, and um, so they, we'd all get together at our, in our patio, and the guys would perform. It was just great. And to think that we didn't record any of it just makes me almost barf. <laughs> well, it was way back before, you know, we did that. Can you believe that? So this looks like a picnic, kind of? Barbecue? Well, it was always having, you know, it's outside. We, had, we were always having barbecues. Mm -hmm. I don't know who this, it's Margaret. This is in 67. Yeah. Have you, I'm sure you've talked to Margaret Whiting. Yes. This is, they oh, were let me see. crowning, a uh, it's a crowning Miss Newport Beach. And I don't know who the guy is. Oh, really? So it's Johnny and Margaret and a man that we don't know. Right. And this is the Miss Newport Beach contest. Right. Neat. No, I hadn't seen that one before. These are all the Yacht Club pictures that uh, we would drag them to. Ah! Oh, what's this guy's name? Look how bored he is. Uh, here they are. They're, they're in Waikiki here. Waikiki. Mm -hmm. So that's the Mercer's on vacation in Waikiki. Yeah. They, they were great. They would always write me cards and letters from wherever they were. So you all really kept up with each other then oh, over yeah. the years. Yeah. So you, you and your husband and family lived in Newport Beach in the 50s, and then you moved to South Carolina. Well, we were just, you know, as a Marine. We, right. Well, we lived in 37 places. We, <laughs> we lived in China for oh. a couple of years. But then did you come back? After you were in well, South Carolina, so did you come back? Come to back to Lido, Lido, right. Okay, so there was a period of years in the 50s and then some time in the 60s. Right. I wonder if Jenny's in any of this. This is more Um. You mentioned being at Mrs. Mercer's house in Savannah. Uh-huh, his mother's, Lillian's. Lillian's, right. Was that... Um, the photograph that you had was that from Mandy's coming out, or was that from another? Well, that was a, that was just Christmas, a Christmas time that we. I don't know whether that was the same year or not. Mm -hmm. uh, so did you did you spend more than one Christmas there, or just? Yeah, two, a couple of Christmases we spent there. Neat. Yeah, it was wonderful. It was marvelous, and it's so uh, you know, I. Uh, heard of Johnny Mercer for years, and I had seen him, you know, in this, in the, uh, some of these movies with a cute little beanie on and everything. And I always thought he was what a terrific guy, and I loved his music. But uh, so when I heard that he uh, had moved on to Toledo, I said, "Ooh, that's wonderful!" And then Vince Healy, uh, their re real estate guy, and ours, 
She said, well, I really ought to get you guys together because you have a lot of com in common, and that's, so he introduced us. And then we started seeing a lot of each other, and I didn't realize, you know, how, what a terrific guy this gentleman was. Mm -hmm. And how amazing, and uh, all these things that he'd written. And I made it, you know, Joe Stafford was a good friend of his, and I didn't care for her voice, and so I made it very plain. I just thought she was a terrible singer and stuff. <laughs> And she was one of their dearest friends, you know. God, how could I say such a thing? <laughs> see, I, but this, in the old days of all these dippy little Polaroids, see, I don't have anything really nifty to show you. I mean, you could look through any of this stuff. So, do you think this was Savannah? Can you well, are we opening a present there? Yeah, and this one is too. I think so then. Okay. Yeah, this is a Christmas deal then. And what about this? That looks like Jeff. That's Jeff and Mike, mm -hmm. but I don't know whose steps those are. It's not to Savannah. Okay, so maybe somewhere else. Cause there's a picture of the Mercers here on the same steps. I think this, oh, this is, I think, the front door of their house on Lido. Yeah, it is. Okay. You know, as my son was dying, um... I, to cheer him up, I kept sending him a lot of pictures. Mm -hmm. And my daughter-in-law has tons of pictures of Johnny and Mike and Jeff that I would give anything to get back. But right now, you know, she's still hurting. And mm -hmm. and I just don't want to invade her her privacy. Here's Ginger. Where is she? Somewhere in Europe. That's Europe. Yeah. Um, So Jeff and Jeff were in the same high school? Yeah, okay. Newport Harbor High. Mm -hmm. That's where that newspaper thing. The clipping, right. <coughs> of the, all of the on stage there, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Johnny and Jack, I can't even think of his name. Marshall? Jack, Jack Marshall, yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus, what's his name, that well-known drummer, Shelly Mann, mm -hmm. who has since died. What was this? See, I cut out all this stuff, and then I forget to date them. But you probably are not interested in anything except that it had to do with Savannah. Well, no, um, just the, the friendship that you all had, and here and there. Well, um, we had it, and they were so distraught when that died with me. They, you know, they want, then they wanted to take me to Europe with them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Gosh, and then we, and then we lost Johnny. Here's some of the, some of the crystal. Oh, you have a complete set of the crystal. No, we crystals. don't have a complete set. This, these are all I have. Look. Yeah. Let me take a look. So after Johnny died, you and Ginger kind of kept in touch. Oh yeah, we were very tight pals. Because then she started. Uh, Oh, I can't think of his name. He, he turned out to be a great escort for her. Oh, Mark. Mark, Mark, yeah. And he helped put together these books, you know, the Huckleberry Friend book and uh, some of these other things. And when he died, it was just the last straw mm -hmm. for her. I guess that was Freddie Martin that was sitting up, sitting on that couch looking so bored. Because this, have you ever heard of Freddie Martin? He was a very well-known. Uh, the, the name doesn't ring a bell, but. I keep uh, dropping these names and I keep thinking, like, wait a minute, she doesn't even know who I'm talking about. Well, we look them up later, so they're good names to drop. Because, uh, when his father died, this guy, he's a columnist for the local newspaper, Fred Martin, and when his father died, I sent him a letter and said how, I, how much I remembered his dad, dad and from, he became a friend of mine through Johnny Mercer, and I sent him a couple of pictures of uh, Johnny and Freddie. Mm -hmm. So we wrote a column on that. 
Did you and Ginger get together and do things after Johnny died, or was it mostly a... a oh, yeah. She, well, uh, then they moved up to Bel Air. Mm -hmm. but Late she, 60s. Right. But she... Uh, they would come down, and, and uh, after Johnny died, and then she uh, had Mark for a pal, they would come down and take me out for dinner occasionally and things like that. Mm -hmm. but Ginger and I did not lose contact. We were on the phone all the time with each other and writing each other, particularly because she, she wrote me a lot more than I wrote her because she was always going somewhere with this guy. Mm -hmm. And it was great. I was happy for her, you know. And so I feel so bad that Ginger just, you know, just kind of slipped out of it. Mm -hmm. It was just too much to, to lose these two men in her life. Surviving one death is hard. But, yeah. But we worried about her at the time that, that Mark passed because two of them. Yeah, that's too much. One too many. Mm -hmm. Two too many. Two too many. Yeah, and I survived my, my husband dying, but I'm not, uh, I'm not over losing my son at all. I'm afraid I never will be. Because mm -hmm. you can replace a husband, you know, but you can't replace a, a kid. And it's hard when things happen, kind of out of turn. Yeah, well. I mean, I should have gone, not him. Mm -hmm. But it's it's great to be in touch with Mandy. Mm -hmm. And I talk to Jeff occasionally. Uh, he was going to come down to Mike's funeral, in fact, and I was amazed that he didn't show up, but he's just, he was too shy. Mm -hmm. but his wife called me a couple days later, and she said he just couldn't, because all of the, his old pals, my son and Jeff's from the high school, I mean, there were hundreds and hundreds of people at this funeral of my sons, and but Johnny or uh, Jeff, just he's a very bashful kid. Mm -hmm. But he could, uh, he also did a lot with Johnny's mu music, and I don't know what it was. He, he had a, st a recording studio, or I don't know what Jeff was doing up there or is doing. Mm -hmm. But Vandy knows, didn't she explain to you what the heck he does? We had a real busy talk. With, I was there with Mandy and with um, Jim, Jamie. Oh, Jamie, yeah. And he got to telling stories about things that Johnny would do with him when he was younger. Yeah, of course. Um, boyhood things and, uh -huh. and just fun stuff. And uh -huh. that's kind of the turn that the conversation took. So we didn't really talk about Jeff. I Oh, I see, okay. It just didn't... I was there a couple of hours and it just didn't come up. I see. Well, I wish I could remember all the stuff that uh, they did with Mike and Mike his. You know, were they in Boy Scouts together? Cubs yeah, Scouts? They were, I think they were cubby, uh, Cubs. And um, I was, because when Matt died, then I went to work right away. I was did the public relations for Hogue Hospital. Mm -hmm. And so I was, didn't keep, I was just always delighted when they would take Mike along because I felt like I was not you know, being as good a mother as I should be to my two kids. But it, that's, my husband's death, death was such a sudden thing, and I, my thought was, well, I've got to keep this family, family together financially. Mm -hmm. And so I started with this wonderful job with a lot of responsibility, and I threw myself into it more, more than, than I should have probably. But the, the Mercers picked up the, the cudgel, and when I, uh, Johnny really became a second dad to Mike. Mike. Uh, Mike was a terrific football player, and when they had the awards banquet, you know, uh, usually you bring your dad, and Mike would take Johnny. Really? Yeah. And Johnny, of course, was a sensation because all the football guys thought he was so terrific and thought his music was so what, what, what I shouldn't say was, is. Mm -hmm. You know, I just jumped through the roof every time I hear one of his. I, and I, I want to see the movie again just to hear the music again. And I'm just so you've seen Midnight in the Garden of Eden oh, yeah. already. And I'm just anxious, angry that it didn't do better. It was too long. It was I guess. too long. It was kind of slow. Yeah, because I liked it. I loved it because of well, I just liked it. Mm -hmm. And I read the you know I have three of these books all over the house, <laughs> and I even had a couple of that. Uh, oh, in fact, one of my books, I've. Nope. I guess it's the one upstairs. And anytime Johnny's mentioned, you know, I underlined it. And I'm going to give that one to Patsy because she's so anxious about it. Well, anyhow, what else do you want to know? 
I'm not being very helpful. Oh, you're being wonderfully helpful. Um, let me think. Were there other people that they kind of associated with in on Lido or? Yes, Florida, we had, what, there who, were. Who would the group be if if they were? The group would be everybody's dead. <laughs> <laughs> the Dykes, for instance, and okay. the Prentigers. The, 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 all of them are have died. Okay, and what were the first names of the Dykes and the? Uh, Hal and uh, what was her name? She was president of the women's club. And Ginger was pretty good about getting in on that, the women's club. What did the women's club do? Well, we were kind of a th meet once a month for luncheons, and, and we were kind of a philanthropic group. Mm -hmm. was, we picked a little charity each year. Mm -hmm. And I think Johnny performed for us, too, a couple of times. Uh, the but there was a group. Did you? Prentigers. Prentigers. Ma Maxine and Joe Preniger, they were part of the group. Mm -hmm. And Vid Vera and George Silver were part of the group. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, I list off these people. That are, I'm the only one left, Chris. Really? It's terrible. Now, they were all older, I will say that. And they scooped up Mike, and, uh, Matt and me. Uh, because we, he was a Marine, mm -hmm. and he had the uniform, you know, and it was semi after wartime, but there still was kind of, which is pretty ridiculous. Oh, really? So but, your first house was a seventeen thousand dollar yeah. house. Your second one was thirty five, and yeah. that second one sold for over six hundred thousand. Six hundred fifty. But I owed so much on it that I didn't get that back ever. Well, still, it's pretty good return. Well, here's Johnny on a boat. Mm -hmm. Looks kind of happy with his rumply hat there pulled yeah. down his head. And here, he, here they are with that Freddie Martin I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. He, you know, he was, he would say, "Now repeat that, Paul. If anything goofy?" Because when I would say, we're, when Matt would say, "Well, we got to hit the sack now," he thought that was great. He was going to use it, and I was always saying something, and then I'd say, "Gasp." And so they took that picture, and also uh, barfing <laughs> was the boys. They like to go on those fun rides down. At, oh, that's where Johnny would take them a lot on the roller coaster merry-go-rounds. And we were all saying, "But we hope. I hope there's no barfing because." <laughs> so we took that picture. And, so there was an amusement park or a yeah, playground that had right had in, scary rides. Just, that's a, here's a nice shot, but you've probably seen this. So that one we have. 1970. With the two of them sitting yeah. together in the caps and holding hands on yeah, the swing. Yeah, so sweet. Whoop. And dumb me. See, I had all these up on my bulletin board. That's why there's thumbtacks and everything. Mm -hmm. And faded. <laughs> I don't know why he sent me this. It's from Italy. Hmm. Hmm. It's a shop window. Yeah. Oh, the good old days, Chris. I know. So sad. And Mike was my kind of my last link to the Mercers because, um, uh, like I say, they were like second parents to him. Mm-hmm. And I, gosh, I've got to get those a lot of those pictures back because I had tons of pictures of Mike and Jeff or Mike with Johnny, and. This is, now see this gal, she was a friend of theirs and they bought one of her paintings, or no, they bought one of her paintings and then got to know her. And this is And that's Pauline. Pauline. Yeah. Yeah, have you ever heard of her? No, um, and I was only at the house once. And I was never at the Lido Isle House. Oh, you weren't? S no. See, I didn't come into the picture here until 1982. Well, yeah, and you're you're just a tweak yourself. Oh, not quite, not quite. Let's see. I know that Mrs. Mercer had wonderful taste in, in oh, art, art and exquisite, elegant, and yes, things like that. So she owned at least one work by this person. Yes. But they had other, of course, Johnny himself was a wonderful artist, you know. We have some of his watercolors. Yeah, that uh, Christmas card that she the sent. Buggy. Yeah. The one with the buggy, in fact, yeah. I've got a copy of that hanging in my wall uh, around the corner. Oh, you do? Uh huh. This, 
this I call my celebrity wall. Um, right in the entrance here. Yeah, right along here. Okay, we're not. We're going to be off mic here around this. See, there, there, there it is. There's Johnny and me. Um, that's a wonderful picture. Isn't it? Anyway, Chris, uh, there's a cute picture of Ginger, but I don't know where. Well, she generally took pretty good pictures. Yeah, they were both, I thought, quite good. Uh, well, they're at the Newport, I don't know why. But this is another lady that was part of our group, and she since died. And who was she? Well, she, she very well-to-do lady. She and her husband that lived on Lido. Mm -hmm. Do you remember her name? Uh, Vera Silver. Vera Silver. Yeah. And they lived on the water. I wonder. I, I don't know what boat that is that Johnny was looking out of. Right there. We have a number of just little pictures where he's on books and things, and we weren't... He loved it, and he liked to fish, too. Oh, I know, he took the boys fishing a lot. Where did, where did they fish? Well, we did some ocean fishing, for mm -hmm. one thing. We went to... Uh, not so... Tuna fishing a couple times. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think we came up with the barfing deal, because, bleh, you know, that was tough out there. Mm -hmm. But this cute guy from town... Um, and he would he has puppets, and he had a program, and he's still very well known in the advertising business. Um, I've got a couple of his records. He's a very funny guy. Stan Freeberg. Mm -hmm. Did didn't, um, anybody mention Stan? I've seen his name in the papers, but we haven't pursued it much to find out what that was. <sighs> so he lived. He no, he didn't. But no, he, uh, he was a good friend of Johnny's. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the, we're trying to write something together. I don't know. But Stan Freeberg went fishing with us a couple times, um, and he never caught anything. Yeah. And for some reason, I always w I would luck out and catch something. And so, <laughs> and Johnny, of course, would pay for the boat and no shot. We'd get home, and, and Stan said, "Well, I don't have anything." Uh, but he said, "I'm," and I want to fish. And I said, "Well, Stan, you have to." You can have one of my fish, but he said, no, I want my own fish. You know, he was, and then he went on in one of his very funny tirades. But he was a fun guy. Who's this? And when Johnny took the kids fishing, did they go out on the ocean, or did they have they a, did both. a little place that they... I think they went up in the ski area t a couple of times, you know, camping. Mm -hmm. I can't forget that, but they... See, this is at the yacht, another yacht club. I'll be darned. Uh, Johnny and Ginger and... Oh, here she is. All of the favors and things on this one have faces like uh, political. Look down in the lower right-hand corner. Maybe it was, then. Well, those are yacht club flags, aren't they? I don't know. Oh, but I do see a, a, a button, yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're like buttons or campaign literature flags with, with photos and buttons with photos. Yeah. It might have just been the, the theme of the party. Would they have put different skippers, maybe, on them? I don't know. Because these uh, two couples were very involved with um, the Goldwater campaign. Oh, really? And uh, maybe the this was a deal, a dinner, you know, Republican deal of some sort. Mm -hmm. Now, G G Ginger was kind of liberal. Mm -hmm. I heard that. Uh, Johnny, uh, so we never, you know, discussed politics. Mm -hmm. But Johnny uh, and Johnny was just nice to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Kind of kept his voting private, huh? Yeah. He just, he didn't want to start a flap. 
yeah, you know, here, he says, read this and say it for him, but I just don't know what it, I think it's a, you know, it's that letter from Polly Wallen. From the artist. From the artist, yeah. See, sh yeah, that's exactly it. Well, that's Johnny's writing. I never gave it back to him, how awful of me. Oh, and the news clipping goes with this. Yeah. This is a nice letter from uh, Sammy Khan that he wrote to, to the Times. And that's the month after, a couple weeks after Johnny died. It's dated um, July 11, 76. Yeah. It's about 10 days mm -hmm. after. Oh, this is more about the press club. See, that's, I know what happened. Uh, in that little program, they, um, um, let's see, when did that die? This one is November 65, it's clipping. Yeah, Matt died in, in September of 65, and so Johnny and Ginger just, called me airway whore. They were so sweet about it and so kind. And then they and then they really took over Mike and Pat's, particularly Mike, to try to help these little waifs. We were waifs. What a nice guy. That's what everybody tells us. Oh, God. I just tell you. Now, he did get cranky at times when he... Uh, in that golf cart. But when he had a few belts, sometimes mm -hmm. he would lose a little bit of control, but not bad. He would never, ever insult me, but he did insult some people, I think. Uh. Did Mandy ever say anything like that? No, but we've heard it from other people. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's, there's one woman in New York, and the story there is that he was at one of her parties, and he had insulted her, and he'd insulted pretty much everybody in the room, so he moved into the kitchen. <laughs> and he went after the maid, and she just kept doing her work and put up with it. But then her cat came in, the maid's cat, and he started in on the cat. Uh-oh. Right, and the story is, and this woman told, I think Margaret got the story, and Margaret tells it very well, is that the, <laughs> the maid stood up and said, okay, you can, you can insult my madam. And you can insult her guests, and you can insult me. But, but you cannot insult <laughs> Seymour the cat. Oh, God. What was so he that, saying to the cat? I, I, don't, I don't have any idea. And it's, its name was Seymour? I think it was. Oh, because the mechanicists who were part of this our group, they had a cat called Seymour, too. Oh, really? But I don't remember Johnny ever doing anything but petting that cat. <laughs> well, oh, good for her. I, so I, the I, maid finally just told him, look, you know, you're, you've done enough. You've, I you've, love it. Was she black? It's a, yes. Oh, good for her. Well, at least I, 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 I shouldn't say yes quite. So I think so from, from what, because yes. we heard it from Margaret, and then we heard it, I interviewed the woman who, at whose home this happened. Oh, really? Yeah, it, well, it, she did a lot of entertaining and whatever. I said, you know, we've it, heard this story. She said, Margaret told you that? Because uh, she never heard about the cat, or she had heard about the oh, cat? Oh, she knew. This lady? She knew, yeah. Is this back east, was it? Mm -hmm. New York. New York? Yeah, was it a party in New York? <laughs> and... But it, it, I mean, it's a, the, the story itself is just perfect. Oh, I'm sure. And I'm, sure it's, Margaret, right? I'm sure that it's gained a little bit as it goes along. Oh, but, you can embellish that beautifully. But apparently that's precisely what he did. He, he had a little too much to drink. Yeah. Did every human that he could and, <laughs> and insulted them and then went to the maid and carried on and then started in on the cat. And that's when the maid finally just put all to it. I wonder how, uh, what, what, what do you, how would you insult a cat? I, well, I don't know. I guess you could tell me you're bad cat you're not you're a sorry excuse for a cat i mean i can't, I can't think of a, I, oh gosh, that's so great. I can't imagine i mean i can't i don't well, see, drink it up to insult people so. now that we're talking about it uh <laughs> he 
he would insult some just women. It was Pat Healy. I remember one time, and uh, what's her name, Smith, and so. But he'd always send them beautiful flowers the next day. Yeah, beautiful flowers. There's beautiful a writer flowers. who wrote a uh, sort of a brief memoir, just a few pages about Johnny, and he called it "Roses in Morning." Oh, <laughs> really? This was he was known for this apparently. Oh, see, I've always tried to keep this quiet. Well. We didn't but start I, this I, project to dig dirt on anybody. No, every, I know. I, every I, single I, person we've spoken with has had one variety or another of a Johnny drinking story. God, you know, I tell you what. And I, all this, those years, he never. Go ahead, excuse me. Well, this article, I mean, it, it was out. It, it's a subscription to something called Gene Lee's Jazz Letter. And Lee's is a lyricist and he's a songwriter and he was the friend of Johnny Mercer, kind of late, uh -huh. like 60s and 70s. And he titled this memoir, Roses in the Morning. And he, he said, it like you, he said it never happened. He never personally experienced it. But that there were all these stories. And um, oh one of the stories he quotes is that apparently at some party, Mercer started in on Joe Stafford. Really? Who really? turned to him and simply said, Johnny, I don't want any of your roses in the morning. <laughs> oh, good for you. <laughs> and he quit. He, he didn't. He stopped right there. And I don't know if he went on to annoy other people or or what it's really too bad uh, no, I don't it seems to me I, what I'm trying to think what ginger w did whether she disappeared or what uh, I mean, she did say that she that there were problems constantly of uh, women coming on to Johnny because you know he is a cute attractive fun guy oh he's a little pixie kind and, of yeah person. he's a pixie and uh, you know not twinkle his eye but when he belted that grape to Totally. Bingo. Mm -hmm. And I, well, Matt and I, I know why he didn't hit us too much. Certainly not Matt and, and definitely not me. Is that we, Matt and I did not really do much drinking. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> uh, so whenever they came over, I don't know whether, I guess we always poured them a drink, but I don't think it was any big, it would never turn into a big, you know. Mm -hmm. Like at some of these yacht club, I forget. I have to put this thing on. Then they have. I've got this carpal tunnel thing. Uh, anyhow, that's <laughs> roses in the morning. Ah, wonderful. Margaret sometimes refers to it as three drinks and two sips. She said there was just that little bit extra that that made the difference. Over the edge. Right. Brad. God, I just can't believe that uh, that I escaped that wrath because. Boy, well, Gene it? Lee's again in his article. He says only once in the in they weren't they weren't together constantly. It wasn't like they were co-writers or anything or, mm -hmm. or business colleagues where they were under the same roof a lot. But he he recounts in his in his memoir that um, they were at a bar and Mercer was beginning to get testy with the waitress. And Lee says that he said I you know he said I said John she's been perfectly pleasant. You know, why are you giving her a hard time? And he said he stopped, left her a big tip, and that was the end of it. So, so t all you have to do is just nail him, maybe. Maybe that's what how Ginger kept him under control, too. Could be. But you know, Again, she, I don't know, because I, yeah, I never well, met him. This is all, before, all this before you were born, probably. Mm, a lot of it. Yeah. And Chris, you know, Ginger built the grape, too. Uh, but she was always a lady. Mm -hmm. And except for her last days, when she would be very insulting to me over the phone. Really? Yeah, she'd say, "I hate you. I don't want to talk to you anymore." Da, 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 da. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Was that like right before she died? Yeah. She died in '94. Well, you know, and I'd call uh, Mandy. You know, I was so distraught. She said, "Oh, she does that to everybody. She's turned on her, uh, me, her sisters. She doesn't even speak to her sisters anymore, mm -hmm. without, you know, insulting them." I said, "My God, Mandy. You know, she and I were." As close as two coats of paint. Mm -hmm. I hate this. It, it breaks my heart. But Mandy's, you know, just said that's. Well, like, so that evidently is part of her Alzheimer's situation because I think that, isn't that what Ginger died of? Uh, the, what we heard was just that she had pneumonia and had been hospitalized. And they thought that she was recovering. Now, I thought. And then that... took a turn for the worse. Oh. She recognized us. She never did. I didn't meet her until 1982, and I didn't see her frequently mm -hmm. then. Um, and she didn't have any particular reason to know me well, but she certainly knew the university. 
she knew the people there and, and retained that. She's a very bright woman. Yes. You know. Really? Yes. Yeah. She was physically very frail in the years that I saw her, really? but just showed great uh, spirit in, even though not being well, wanting to participate when we had festivals, mm -hmm. when we had special events. Um, and yeah. each, each time over the last few years, I mean, we just didn't think that she'd be back again, that the trip would be too hard. And she still kept coming back. Wonderful. When we had things. So. Did she have Mark with her, or was it? Yeah. Mark came, and, and then after Mark passed away, uh, we didn't have things like every year, so we didn't see her annually. Although her niece, who lives in the Atlanta area, would bring her by because Ginger would stop in Atlanta when she was going to visit her sisters. Yeah. So we still saw her quite a bit, and I, um, that I know that she she knew very well what the university was, and people who she met there early on and saw enough to really know, she remembered them. Yeah, hmm. pretty pretty consistently hmm. right up until so I think she was just finally her body gave up well Cause she was not the last few times she visited us she was not strong but she real, was real game and make every effort she was lucid yeah pretty much kind of kind of came and went a little bit but uh -huh. with most people it does when they're older and, and not well she was sensitive about being her, being Jewish at times. I know that. Uh, we didn't find out she was until after she died. Really? Her, well, her stage name had been Mia. Yeah, which is Irish. Irish. Yeah. <laughs> so we didn't we didn't know anything about that until oh, we do. just you know ninety four when she died. Yeah, and I guess Johnny's family was appalled initially because you know they were such. Uptight Presbyterian or whatever they were. Episcopalian. Episcopalian. Oh yeah, that's right. Because I sometimes we would be walking home from a party, a party, and the Episcopalian church was right on the corner. Mm -hmm. And a couple times we would drop in, and then there are times when Johnny would say, "No, I don't think we ought to go in, Paul. I'm not. I don't feel like a. I belong in a church, you know, because he'd been drinking. Mm -hmm. So he had the sense to stay out of the church." You know, at night, if, uh, it was wobbly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Ginger, you know, right away got uptight about it when they moved on Lido. And so, so what would that be? Was Lido anti Semitic or? I think she thought they were. Mm -hmm. And uh, Matt's, you know, said, uh, we don't give a diddly squat whether you're from Israel or Zawali or what the heck you're talking about, Ginger. We don't care. Mm -hmm. I'd get off of I mean, Matt really chewed her out for having that attitude. Really? Uh-huh. And so she never, never popped with it after that. Mm -hmm. But maybe she, well, of course, being in, well, in showbiz people, she, she didn't think about that. But when she moved on to Lido in that area, uh, and there is one time when we went to the, um, University of Newport Harbor Yacht Club. Mm -hmm. This Vince Healy I told you about that, that introduced us got Johnny a, um, oh, not a, yeah, I guess kind of a temporary membership. Mm -hmm. And so Bobby, uh, what is this guy's last name? Well known, well, you wouldn't remember. This is just before your time. But he was Jewish and uh, loud. Mm -hmm. And Johnny took us and this guy and a couple other musicians, I guess, that were Jewish. And Vince Healy, the guy that got him the temporary membership, got chewed out by the board of directors of the of the Newport Harbor Yacht Club. Really? Of right. having these loud Jewish people there. Mm -hmm. And maybe Ginger got what heard about that. I don't know. Well, did she just express reservations? about going places or what no she 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 said to us one t a couple of times mm -hmm. um thinking i don't know what she thought people were looking down on her on little earth but they uh, but they weren't she mm -hmm. she imagined this it was not true i mean they, everybody loved her and i mean she was marvelous at the hospital and everything else mm -hmm. and of course everybody was nutty about johnny so i i don't know where she picked that up 
Just some, you know, some stupid idiot made a crack about it. Could be. Or, they, or made some comment about somebody else comment, that she heard. Mm, yeah. Maybe they made an anti-Semitic remark about somebody, mm -hmm. and she thought just the fact that she was Jewish, that, oh, well, that's what they feel about me then. Mm -hmm. And that's just not true. And in fact, at the last one, she was so mean to me, I thought, God, you think she thinks I'm anti-Jewish now? Mm -hmm. I mean, she should know well, know you well enough by now, but anyway, it's over, and she's gone, mm -hmm. and I miss her terribly. Yeah, we do too. You know, we, we had great respect for woman. just to, to have the spirit to want to keep doing things, yes. even though physically she was not well. Well, I, let's see, when was the last time I saw her? I think she visited us for the last time, probably in 91. Oh, see, We I saw her in 89, we saw her in 91, and then we came out probably in December of 93, 92 or 93. Yes. Because we had a change of directors, and the new director had not met her yet. Okay. And she wasn't well enough to come our way, so we... We Went to her. Mm -hmm. This way. To, to, to her better home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And visited her there. And I think she'd had some strokes, so speaking was, was difficult. Oh, okay. Yeah, I noticed that. But one. she followed the conversation perfectly well. I mean, she knew. She didn't feel good, and she retired early. But, um, you know, she followed what we were saying. We had brought literature and, uh -huh. and, and things like that. And, you know, she was. I'm trying to think the last time I saw her. It was at the, at the Bel Air home. And she, would and she was not too well. She had to lie down or something. But then she just all of a sudden turned this attack. I'll have to ask Mandy again about that. Uh, why? But I, you know, I just thought, I thought Mandy told me that she had Alzheimer's. Or was it just having the beginnings of it? She may have. We didn't see her frequently. Mm -hmm. But I, I do know that she... I mean, the last time we spoke with her again was probably 93, 92, 93. Yeah. And she certainly knew the university and was aware of what we were doing. Her well, opinion of it may have gone back and forth. I and, see. Um, you know, it may have been that, that at times she was paying attention and focused, and at times she wasn't. Oh, that's a good picture of Johnny singing. you have any idea where that is? No, probably at the rendezvous. Oh, that was a great gathering place for... Uh, the rendezvous, is that the name of a place? Yeah. Yeah, there he is, in fact. He's per performing. Oh, cool. Okay, so the rendezvous is... That's a Newport club? Beach. Is it a club? No, it's just a place where you go dance. Okay, so it's a dance these, hall. Uh, well, it wasn't a dance hall. It was a place where... Big, it was where big bands came, yeah. and um, Stan Kenton and guys like that, and Jenny and, and Ginger, and when Matt was still alive, and that, even afterwards we would go, you know, because he was always friends of the, whoever was performing. Well, and that would have been just his kind of place, too. Yeah, it was perfect for him, because, you know, you, young people dancing away, and he liked not young people, and he was fitting beautifully with everybody. Wonderful pictures. Yeah, aren't those great? I really don't know what else I have to show you. We may be able to send you, if you if you would be willing to help us, some uh, photographs to see if you can identify. Yeah. Because be I'm sure that, as I see these, I'm sure that some of the snapshots and things that we have were taken at Lido. Uh-huh. It would be odd if they weren't. Yeah, because Ginger and, and they, they had good, good cameras. They took some great pictures mm -hmm. themselves, you know, of... Me and the kids. Mm -hmm. uh, each time we got a new car, Johnny would whip out his camera. <laughs> look at him, look at it. That's funny, that's in France. <laughs> hey, he looks like a happy man there. <laughs> Here's Nikki. Oh no, not, yeah. I can't keep up with Mandy and all her kids. Uh, I don't know any of them very well. I mean, we, we have names. Yeah, look and at Ginger here. Yeah. Is that funny? 
it was in Europe. Huh. How about Debbie Reynolds? Have you talked to her? No. Probably should. Because it's, it, it says there that she presented the thing, and I didn't know that. Oh yeah, the the sixty two Academy Award. Hmm. It's a wonderful picture. We have a a um, print of that in our exhibit. Oh good. Okay. Well, I don't know what else to say. Well, I thank you. What you've said is wonderful. You've given us a picture of the Mercers at Lido Isle, and yes. we didn't know anything about that except that they they lived there. They lived there, and they were very popular there. Uh, everybody loved them. We had a group uh, eventually, and uh, then that's when Ginger got up tight about being Jewish, and that's when Johnny got smashed a couple occasionally and would send flowers the next day. <laughs> Roses in the morning. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then, you know, and it was work, though. I mean, the, the, uh, the women would you know, just calm down. Everything was fine again. Because mm -hmm. he's, a, you know, Johnny was such a sweetheart and such a likable guy. My God, mm -hmm. how could you stay mad at him? Well, and he was always very sorry too. And yes, from what we hear. he showed his remorse. This is a picture of Johnny, or of Ginger. That I think Johnny took because it says who's. Oh no, Ginger wrote. Ginger wrote that on the back. Yeah, snapshot poolside. Yeah. Who says blondes don't have more fun? <laughs> I th this great picture of him leaning against the, um, the fire plug. Is, yeah, they they've used that on so many things. We've used it in our exhibit. We've got a big blow up of it. Oh, that is Quite so wonderful. Perfect. Yes. Very New York. Very, very. Well, thank you. I well, think okay. I think we're just I about should have offered you something. Would you like a cup of coffee or a glass of wine or a beer or something? <laughs> I don't think so. I think it's a little early, but I yeah. appreciate it. Okay, so you were saying that your son was an ordained minister of what? Um, Non-denominational. Non-denominational. He's married. He, he said one time, he said, just think, Mom, I can marry you or bury you, whichever <laughs> order you want. And so Ginger picked him to, to do these services in Savannah. For when Johnny died. For when Johnny died. Uh, they had, I think it was a Bing Crosby that did the one in New York, and Fred Astaire did the one in London, and then they had a big one up in Hollywood mm -hmm. that uh, uh, Patsy and I, <clears throat> and I went to with the kids. But Mike did the one in Savannah. Mm -hmm. uh, what can you tell me about it? Were you there? I wasn't there. Okay. And I would give, you know, Ginger, did, you know, she bought him a ticket. And he flew out with her, in fact, I think. Mm -hmm. And so it was a great experience, you know, and he read what, to me what he was going to say before he left. And I thought, you know, I said, Mike, you really hit the thumb on the nail. That's perfect. Johnny would love it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I have no idea how, how long a ceremony it was or whatever. Da, da, da. Mm -hmm. But see, that's when I went, when, I, when the movie opened, to see the gravesite because... Because your son had been there. Because he'd been there and conducted that service. I think Chrissy was with some heavyweights then, and of course the, the other people that did the services in uh, New York and London and even up in town. Uh, Ginger was wonderful. She dragged me all over the place, meeting all her famous friends mm -hmm. at that service. At the one in Los Angeles? The one in L.A., yeah. yeah. But I was Thought I, Mandy, I know was that the one in Savannah because I reminded her of it one time when we were talking. She said, "Oh, I know, I know." Oh, excuse me, a second. 